Well, it's Sunday, and we are so glad that you are here for church. Whether you're a regular or you're here for the first time, we are delighted that you've chosen to spend your Sunday morning with us. How's your week been? Well, a highlight for us was that uh, we returned to small groups on Thursday night, and we had almost 50 people on a Zoom call. Yeah, it was so good to see each other's faces and talk, and then we had some great teaching and a chance to get into smaller groups where we could chat and pray um, with each other. Even more people registered for group afterwards, so much so that we've had to open up a new group. So there's still space for you if you want to join in on Thursday. You can go to falkirtvineyard.com forward slash small groups to register. But today, Ryan and Aidan are going to lead us in worship. Love More and Elena are going to give us some updates. And Pastor Lorraine McNinch will be bringing us the next part in our series about life in the kingdom. But before we begin, we want to take communion together. On the night that Jesus was going to be arrested, he gathered his closest friends together for a meal. And he prayed over them that they would be united with God and with each other. And then he explained what was going to happen to him. He took some bread and said that it was a symbol of his body. He took some wine and said it represented his blood. He was going to be the sacrifice for their sins and for the sins of the whole world. He was going to break the power of our distance from God and our division from each other. As he passed around the bread and wine, he told his friends that whenever they did this, they were to remember him. And I think that's because it's easy for us to forget all that Jesus has done for us mm -hmm. and the great love and grace and forgiveness that he showered on us. And also helps us to remember that through Jesus, we have become a part of God's family. It's a community of people who have all been saved by God's grace and called to love and bless each other. So this morning, we're going to join with all of Jesus' followers, not just at Falkirk Vineyard, but around the world. And not just today, but for the past 2,000 years, we join in with the community of those who trust in Jesus. And as we dip the bread into the juice, we join with the many who've gone before us and the many who today share with us the hope that Jesus has saved us, forgiven our sins, called us his own, and given us a place in his family. Let's serve one another in communion. Now, may the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you have saved us, that you've forgiven our sins, that you've made us into new people, and that you've called us your own. Help us to always remember all that you've done for us, Help us to always remember that you've called us to be united to God and united to each other. We thank you for our church community. We thank you for the church all around the world and that you have made us a part of your kingdom. So today we just want to thank you. We praise you, God. We love you, Jesus. And we want to worship you with all that we have. And we pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's worship God together. Walking around 
bless you. We are called by your name, Lord. We are known. We are loved. We are chosen and not forsaken. And there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from your love. What we need, what we cry out for, what we long for is more of you, Lord. To be more like you. To be in your presence more often. To sense your presence more often. Our Lord, I pray you'd stir the affections of our heart today and draw us nearer to you and make a lasting change, Lord. Make a lasting change in our hearts and our lives. Holy Spirit, as we surrender to you, come and do your work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Falkirk Vineyard. <laughs> wow, we are super excited <laughs> to be able to give you the announcements this week. But first, if you'd like to give financially, then you can do so by heading over to falkirkvineyard.com slash giving. Yeah, and uh, guys, every man, we're back and we're doing it through Zoom. So we're going to have a quick catch up tomorrow at 8pm. There's not really any agenda apart from bring your shells so there'll be some banter maybe a pub quiz from bell sharp quiz extraordinaire <laughs> <laughs> if you need any more info head over to info at falk vineyard dot com <laughs> struggled to get that one right um every thursday we have small groups um, they're on at 8 p.m. And if you've not signed up to one yet, don't worry, you can still do that. So if you head over to fogatvineyard.com slash small groups, you can do that there. And we'd really encourage you guys to get stuck into those. And also, if you are in high school or if you're about to join high school after summer, then we have our very own youth small group that we personally will be at. So top notch. Um, so that one will be on at half seven and you can get more info by going to our Instagram page, Falkirk Vineyard Youth. Breaking news. Oh, something's Justin. Do you know what's happening tonight? What's happening tonight? I'll tell you what's happening tonight. Alpha's happening tonight. Alpha's going to be happening tonight at 7pm. So if you guys want to get signed up, head over to fuckitvenue.com forward slash alpha. Oh, I need, to, I need a hand remembering these. <laughs> God. Anyway, enough of that's going to be awful of this. We're going to head over to Jerry now, who's going to give us a more serious Bible reading. Hi, today's reading is from Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 to 28. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree does not, that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rains come in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, 
it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, so today we are nearing the end of a series of Life in the Kingdom, where we're looking at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And so far, Jesus has been painting a picture of what life in the Kingdom really looks like. How it changes the way we relate to God and the way we relate to others. And how following life in the Kingdom makes us people who naturally do the things that please God. When you put your trust in Jesus, you become a kingdom citizen. And this is the promise for those who live in the kingdom of God. Your relationship with God is made right. Your relationship with other people is made right. And you can live a life of fullness because you are connected to God and are following his direction for living. But to fully enter this king of life in the kingdom, we're going to have to make some hard decisions. We might have to say, I'm not going to live this way anymore. I'm going to live this new way. And this is what it means to be a disciple, to choose to walk after Jesus instead of going with my own desires or the ways of the world. And to be a disciple is a noun, not a verb. It's something you are opposed to something you do. And what I mean is discipleship is not just a course or a practice. It is an identity. It's a posture of life which defines you as a person and informs the entirety of the way you live. And so today Jesus is going to talk about what are some of those decisions? What are some of those choices that we have to make to be his disciple? For me, I have chosen to be his apprentice, his disciple. He is the one that I am focused on. And that means there might be something I'm not going to do anymore or pay attention to anymore because my trust is in him. Dallas Willis says this, a disciple or apprentice is someone, is simply someone who has decided to be with another person under appropriate conditions in order to become capable of doing what that person does or to become what that person is. Willard goes on to summarise, to be a disciple of Jesus is crucially to be learning from Jesus how to do your job as Jesus himself would do it. See, the expectation of Jesus was that we, as his people, as his followers on earth, we would live our lives as his students and be co-labourers with him that we would find him totally irresistible. We would admire him so much and in, in every aspect we would find him wise, attractive, powerful, good, that we would constantly be seeking to be in his presence and be guided and instructed by him in every aspect of our lives. We look to Jesus as the one who teaches us how to live. So, my question to you this morning is, who teaches you? Who disciples you? One thing is for sure, you are someone's disciple. We all learn to live from someone. And if you think about it, when you were little, we all learned from our parents or those who brought us up, whether it was good or bad. And then at school, we would learn from our teachers. And if you went to university, you'd learn from your lecturers. In jobs, we would learn from our work colleagues or our bosses. We don't always think about it like this because for us in the Western, we like to think that we are our own person or we, have, or we make up our own minds. But that is because we have been mastered by those who have taught us what we should do or should not do. The idea that we are our own people is an idea that we have been taught. So, with this in mind, let's have a look at what Jesus says about being a true disciple. 
Dallas Willard actually says, anyone who is not a continual student of Jesus and who nevertheless reads the greatest promises of the Bible as if they are for them, is like trying to cash a cheque on another person's account. At its best, it will only succeed sporadically. You see, the effect of studying under Jesus continuously would be that naturally you would learn how to do everything in Jesus' name. And in today's reading, from the greatest sermon ever, yes, ever, Jesus gives us four pictures of what discipleship to him involves. He wants us to know what we signed up for. And so let's look at Matthew 7, 3, 13 to 14. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for, me, for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is narrow and the road is difficult and only a few find it. You see, the narrow gate is the gate of obedience. It is the gate of confidence in Jesus that he can actually do what he says he can do. It is when we fully trust Jesus, even when we might not understand what he means, but we do it anyway because he can be trusted and we trust him. And not everyone finds the narrow gate. It is the harder one to find, but it leads to life. There are not as many people on this path because it's narrow and you can only follow the person in front of you, one behind the other. And on the narrow road, the only person you are following is Jesus. And this way is not just about doctrinal correctness because there are many people who can't grasp all the complexities of correct doctrine, but nevertheless, they are having a living and active faith in Jesus. We also find people who fully grasp the correct doctrinal correct, uh, correctness and perhaps they even teach it to others, but in their hearts, they are full of hatred and bitterness and unforgiveness. Now, Doctrine is important. We are significantly helped by understanding the truths of our faith and thinking rightly about God. But just understanding doctrine is not what makes you a disciple. Obedience to Jesus is what makes you a disciple. Now the broad gate in this picture, it, by contrast to the narrow gate, is where most people go through because it's easy. You're simply doing whatever you want to do. You're going with the crowds, you're going with the flow. And this is where we put ourselves first. We're no other thought of other people, or no other thought of consequences, it's self-indulgent. But Jesus says this path leads to destruction. The broad gate or the broad road is the path everyone starts off in life. It's the way the world does things. The only way to get off this path that leads to destruction, destruction is to put your faith in Jesus, which is like choosing the narrow path. And I would encourage you this morning, if you are on that broad path, it's not too late for you to stop and change direction and follow the narrow path. You have the opportunity to choose this path and this way of living, following Jesus in everything you do. The second picture we find in verses 15 to 20. Beware of false prophets who have come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can produce bad, a, sorry, a good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by the actions. Here Jesus says his disciples are like good trees that bear good fruit. They have been transformed from the inside out 
and they are living in fellowship with Jesus and being obedient to him. And because of this, their lives are producing good fruit. And the bad tree symbolizes a life that never produces good and lasting fruit. Have you ever seen a tree that's rotten? Quite often, you can't tell from the outside. If you look at a tree, it looks fine, it looks great, but it's not producing any fruit. And when you cut into that tree, you find that in the core, right to the core of the tree, the part that's really at the centre is rotten and it's died. Jesus is saying that those who are his disciples will find themselves living rightly from the inside out. And these people won't be just pretending or trying to do outward works that make them look good. They will be people who are genuinely crying out to God to say, change my heart so I can live a genuine life from the inside out because I'm really tired of pretending to be someone or something I'm not. And Jesus then warns us about those who'd want to mislead us. Those who look good on the outside and who say all the right kinds of words. They say things like we want to hear and all the while they're just using us and wanting to manipulate you so to do the things that they want. Now these people should be avoided at all costs. Outwardly, they look like sheep. They look just like you and I. But inwardly, they're only thinking about eating and devouring the sheep. They're waiting to devour you. They're using you for their own purposes. The wolf in sheep's clothing is the one who tries to fake discipleship and authority by outward deeds instead of feeding Jesus' sheep. They are using their pretense to prey on Jesus' sheep. What we need to do is to identify these types of people. What we need to do to identify these types of people is to watch what they do and don't pay as much attention to what they say because actions speak louder than words and what they do will show you who they really are. This isn't just true of false, this isn't just true of false teachers or prophets, but any teaching that we listen to instead of Jesus. 2 Timothy 4, 3 4 says this, For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. Doing what he said, beginning from believe on him who God sent, we step into the flow of God's ways. We enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let's look at Matthew 7, 21-23. True disciples. Not everyone who calls out to be Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of the Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we pro prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Lord, Lord, this is a picture where people's words do not match their will or their intentions. They think that just saying things makes it so. And Jesus is saying, no. It takes more than just words. You see, God sees their hearts and God sees their motives. You cannot hide from God. The last picture, the house on the rock. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and does not obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And doing what Jesus knows to be best for us, we build a life that is absolutely indestructible. It is built 
on the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ and his wife. So, what house do you want to build? Do you want to be the person who is doing things their own way, who is pretending to be something they're not, whose words have nothing to back them up in sight? This is the someone who builds a house on the sand. It's unstable. This kind of pretense, pretense cannot last. It will break down when the storms of life come. Or, do you want to be someone who is following Jesus closely? Someone who surrenders the direction of their life to him because they know that Jesus has the best direction for them? Do you want to be someone who lives where their outward actions and their inward emotion and feelings and decisions match up? Do you want to be someone whose words actually have weight to them? Someone for whom what you say is actually backed up by the way you live your life. This is like a house built on the rock. This is how Jesus lived and that is how he is calling us to live. When you say that you're a follower of Jesus, does that mean that you're being obedient to what Jesus is calling to you to do? Are you looking to Jesus and saying, teach me? Are you going to the Bible and studying what Jesus does and says and you're saying, teach me how to do this stuff in the Bible? If you're not doing this, the point, that's okay. If you're not doing that just now, that is okay. The point is, let's be honest with ourselves and say, I'm not really doing this, but I know that you, Jesus, are the truth and the life and I want to follow after you. Help me. Let my heart, maybe your crap that you pray this morning is, let my heart be pure and let my fruit be true. Let my fruit be good. Let my words please you and bless you and be more than just attempts to impress people. That's a good prayer. God loves that prayer. You can do something with that. Well, last year, I took a deep look at the way I was following Jesus. See, my understanding of being a follower of Jesus was to do what he said. So he said, go and love people, be kind to people, read the Bible, spend time in prayer, hear God's voice. And that's what I was doing. And that is great. But I also realised uh, there was something missing. There was something missing. Um, I, I would go to God uh, because I wanted to do things well. I wanted to be a good leader. I wanted to take responsibility of leading this church well. So I would be going because I, was, I needed help in that area. And that is all good. I absolutely should be doing that. But there was something missing. There was still something missing. I, I was something missing. I couldn't, I don't know what was it. So I was frustrated. So I went to, I, that's what made me take a deeper look into how I was following after Jesus. And slowly, but surely, the Father was stripping away things in me until I came to a point where I just wanted to be with Jesus just to be with them. Not to be a good leader, not to love people well, but just to be with Jesus. I, I wanted to know how he did things and why he did the things in the way in which he did them. I started to look at how Jesus was with people and how did Jesus love people? How did he discipline people? How did he teach people? How did he love people? And I realised that to be like Jesus, I needed to spend more, much, much more time with him, to learn from him and to become more like him. So I had to keep reading the Gospels because that's how we learn how Jesus did things. You see, I want to love like Jesus. I want to speak the way Jesus speaks. I want to tell stories the way Jesus tells stories. I want to forgive people like how Jesus forgives people. 
I want to surrender my life to the Father the way that Jesus surrendered his life to the Father. I want to heal people the way that Jesus healed people. I want to set captives free the way that Jesus set captives free. I want to raise people from the dead like Jesus did. I want to answer people in the manner that Jesus answered them. And I want to teach people the way that Jesus taught. And I want to live like Jesus lived. I am trying to be an apprentice to Jesus. I want to always be in a posture of learning. And it's an ongoing thing. And you know, some days I've nailed it. And there's other days I fall way short. But I know there is grace for me in those days. How about you? Do you want to be a disciple or apprentice to Jesus? What things would you need to change to allow this to happen? Because you see, it's a choice. You have to choose. You have to set time aside and you have to prioritise Prioritise your time with Jesus over other things, no matter how important those other things may seem. The goal is to have an inward transformation through being a disciple and apprentice to Jesus. The central point of reference is always a divine kind of love, agape love. And it's this agape love that we've been talking about over the past few weeks that comes to characterise the core of our personality. And if we are to be someone's apprentice, there is one thing that is absolutely essential. We have to be with that person. We have to hang around that person. We have to spend time with them. To follow Jesus means to be with him. And if I'm Jesus' disciple, that means I am with him. To learn from him, to be like him. And to be an apprentice is, means to hang out with someone, an expert in their field, to watch what they do, to learn how they do things, and then copy them. Actually, the being with them is an absolute necessity. So, how do we be with Jesus? Well, Jesus says in John 14, 26, But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Jesus carefully goes over the fact with his disciples that he would be taken away from them in the visible human form they had known. And that another strengthener, some Bible say strengthener, comforter, encourager would come. And this comforter would be with them until the end. And of course, we know that that is the Holy Spirit. And to be with Jesus means be full of the Holy Spirit. Are you a disciple or a apprentice to Jesus? So you know, it's quite unfortunate that this term disciple has been separated from the term Christian. But you know, for the early followers of Jesus, it would be impossible for them to think that you could believe in Jesus actually without being his disciple. Because there would have only been two types of people, followers or the crowd. You'd either be following Jesus or you'd be in the crowd. As a disciple of Jesus, you are with him by choice and by grace. I'm trying to learn from him how to live in the kingdom of God. By praying for people to be healed, by praying for people to be set free, to love people how Jesus loved people. Another way of putting it is to say that I'm learning from Jesus to live my life as if he would live my life if he were me. Now, I'm not saying that I'm learning everything he did, but I am learning how to do everything I do in the manner that he did all that he did. Now, I want you to hear this. A disciple to Jesus is not necessarily one who is devoted to doing specifically religious things. What I am saying is learning from Jesus how to lead your life, your whole life, your real life. Jesus is interested in my life. He's interested in your life. He's interested in everything to do with me. And I need to live my life how he would live it if he 
where me. That's what I'm trying to do. See, my discipleship to Jesus is not only a matter of what I do, but how I do it. And it covers everything. The teaching of Jesus in the gospel show, shows us how to live the life we have been given in the time, place, family, neighbours, talents, opportunities that are ours. And his words left to us in scripture provide all we need in a way of general teachings about how to conduct ourselves. So how to become a disciple? First of all, you would absolutely love Jesus. Be in love with him. And you'd have such a wonderful admiration of who he is. you think he was the most amazing person who ever lived. Did you think of Jesus like this? Let's look at what Jesus thinks of you in Matthew 13, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. And in his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on a lookout for choice pearls. And when he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. What a lovely picture of Jesus' love for you and me. Symbolically, you and I are that tiny peril, the treasure, and Jesus is the man who sold everything he had to he owned to buy that field, leaving Jesus leaving his exalted place of glory to come and pave the sin of the whole world with his blood just so he could have you and me, his treasure. And this is what it was like for those who walked with Jesus and it's exactly the same for those who choose to be his disciple today. So this morning, are you on the broad road today or have you chosen the narrow road? If you're on the broad road this morning, God always has off junctions or slip roads where you can come off at any time and join the narrow road. And if you're the tree that's gone bad, there's a tree doctor that can come and heal you and to help you bear good fruit game. And if you're a disconnected branch, there is a way also to be grafted in to the true and living vine. Jesus really can be your Lord and not just something you say because it's the great religious words. Jesus is that good. Jesus really is that loving. He is a good king and he wants the best for you. You really can have a life that has solid foundations that says, I am really living. I'm not on shaky ground. Where you're not afraid that this whole thing is going to fall apart and fall down at any moment, but that you are secure on the rock that is Jesus. You can enter into that by being Jesus' disciple, even if you've been a Christian for a long time or a short time. It's a decision you make right now today to stop pretending, take off the mask and just be honest with God. And for some, you may have been taught or have believed it was just, it was okay, it was enough to just say a prayer and as long as you go to church, then that's your disciple of Jesus. Now, it's not that these things are bad or what you're doing is wrong, but it's just there is so much more than that in following Jesus. And this morning, you are invited into this way of life to spend time with Jesus, to be his apprentice and, or his disciple. And if you're watching this and you would like to know more about Jesus, then click on the live prayer button and someone will be there to answer any of your questions. And if you would like to go on this wonderful journey with Jesus, then click on the live prayer button and someone will pray for you this morning. For others, this morning, you might be thinking, I have been a Christian for many years, but today you realise that you want to surrender again to Jesus, to be his disciple, 
to apprentice yourself to him and to follow him in a more intentional way. You are his treasure. He gave up his life for you. And his message to you this morning is, come, follow me. And as you apprentice yourself to Jesus, and as you walk ever more closely to him, may you become more and more like him every passing day. May you experience all the joy that living in the kingdom brings.
Thank you so much, Ryan and Aiden. We just get the sense that for many of you today, Jesus' words have really hit home. And Jesus is so gracious, and his desire is that we learn to experience real life by trusting in him. So we want to pray over you today and with you that your heart will be filled with the desire for more of Jesus. And maybe you have never made the decision to follow Jesus before, and we want to pray for you too. Yeah. In fact, let's do that right now. Awesome. Let's pray together to Jesus and tell him that we want to follow him. And as we pray, maybe you want to repeat these words after us and make them your own. So let's pray. Jesus, I believe that you are the way, the truth and the life. I believe that you died for my sins. And I believe that you rose back to life in glory. I realize that there is no one else who can teach me to live the life that God wants. Forgive me for trusting more in myself or in the ways of this world than I do in you. I want to be your disciple. I want to change my direction. I want to join you on the narrow path of true living. I want you to teach me and change me. Bless me with the presence of your Holy Spirit. And give me the courage to obey you even when it's hard. I give my life to you. You call the shots now, Jesus. For the rest of my days, you will be my focus and my joy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you prayed with us and you want to let us know, please click the little button below that says, I commit my life to Jesus. We'd also love to pray with you about anything that's going on in your life. So please click the live prayer button and a private chat will open with one of our team and they will be praying for you. Don't forget to register for a small group because last week was so great, we don't want anyone to miss out. So visit falkirkvineyard.com forward slash small groups to sign up. You can also find out more about what's going on at Falkirk Vineyard by visiting our website, falkirkvineyard.com, or any of our social media channels. Now, before we go, I wanted to speak a blessing over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Have a great week, guys. Bye. Bye.